So I think we can start. Um, so hello everyone, a warm welcome to all our participants today. I'm Chris, the host of today's episode of the AES Speaker Series. Today we are delighted to have Thomas Sattelberger on our stage. Hello, Mr. Sattelberger. Hello. Now, before I introduce Mr. Sattelberger and our topic, allow me to briefly say a few words about AES. The Asian Europe European Society was founded in 2019 and provides a platform for students and young professionals to create cross-cultural connections. Our mission is to get rid of stereotypes by fostering intercultural respect and understanding between Asia and Europe. We started as a small student society at the Technical University of Munich, but are now slowly growing into something like a global community with members in different parts of the world. In addition to our speaker series, we also organize corporate workshops and a wide range of social events, like for example, a Stammtisch, where our members meet and can talk to each other. If this sounds interesting to you, you can get in touch with us on our website, aesmuc.de, or follow us on our social media channels. The link will also be in the chat later. Now coming back to our event today, let me quickly share today's structure with you. First of all, I will introduce our topic and say a few words about our guest, Thomas Sattelberger. Next, I will leave the stage entirely to him to give us a keynote speech about what diversity means and what recent developments and trends have happened over the last few years. In the end, there will be a moderated Q&A part. I highly encourage you to submit your questions and ideas, and you can do so by using the Q&A function on your screen. Now, on to today's topic, diversity. Diversity has become a prominent slogan. Social initiatives such as the LGBTQI+, the Black Lives Matter or the women's rights movement are pushing for change and demand equal rights. Politicians debate about changing the law accordingly, leading, for instance, to the right of same-sex marriage in Germany in 2017. Companies strive to diversify the workforce, including not just different genders, but also, for example, different religions, different backgrounds, or different nationalities. However, levels of diversity and inclusion vary across countries and industries. And discrimination, discriminating patterns of thinking are still common today. Today's speaker, Thomas Sattelberger, is a member of the German parliament. During his professional career, he held several management positions in companies such as Lufthansa and Deutsche Telekom AG. As a human resource director at Deutsche Telekom AG, Mr. Sattelberger initiated a quota for the representation of women in management positions. He has been an advocate for diversity in the workplace even before the turn of the century. After retiring, Mr. Sattelberger became more active in the political field. Currently, he's a speaker of innovation, education, and research of the FDP's parliamentary group. So as an experienced human resource professional and driver of change in the German employee development, he will guide us through the evolution of and challenges for diversity, and also share his personal experience with us. The diversity debate is flourishing, but what lies behind the slogan? How diverse are today's management levels really? What changed over the recent years? And what still needs to be done? I now hand over to Mr. Sattelberger, who will give us a short, who will give us the answers to those questions during his speech. Well, uh, hello everybody. Uh, and thank you for the invitation. Um, what connections do I have to diversity? Uh, in, a, in, a time, uh, in, in a time when you were not born yet, in 1994, uh, I visited uh, uh, in Paris a conference on diversity. And actually, I was the only German participant in those times. And um, uh, I, I'm, I have probably... Um, since since the 90s, I have a, a close to 30 year history of being an advocate uh, of female advan advancement uh, in enterprises and in leadership positions and being myself 
uh, a gay man, naturally, I have also a very personal affiliation uh, to the issue of, of, of diversity. Um, look, in, in politics, na naturally, you are also confronted uh, with the issue of diversity. If you look at uh, the social background, for example, of members of parliament, uh, when, when you look at, at, at the, uh, the ethnical background of, of members of parliament in Germany, if you talk about the distribution between young people and elder uh, parliamentarians um, and, and so on, and naturally when you, when you see the still very low uh, participation um, uh, of women uh, in, the, in, the, in the Bundestag or the German uh, federal uh, parliament, because it's, I think it's in the moment, it's, it's even below uh, 30%. Now, when you, when you talk about diversity, and please, next chart, uh, diversity has manifold dimensions. Uh, on, the, on the one hand, um, it's, it's the dimension of diversity in society, diversity in corporations, diversity within individuals. Uh, and on the other hand, you, you have a, a dimension of biological diversity, um, uh, for example, age, height, uh, ethnic background, gender, but already with gender, you have a debate now uh, in many countries in this world uh, about biological gender and how you feel about gender, the felt gender. Um, and uh, so you might debate is if gender is a biological issue, but definitely age, height, um, uh, and, and uh, ethnic background is something like that. Then you have social diversity. Um, this, this refers to the issue, with which social background do you have? What kind of educational biography? What religion? What dialect do you speak? Uh, and, and you naturally talk also about personal diversity. Um, I, 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 I tend to describe that as the diversity of mind, um, the diversity of lifestyles, about uh, the diversity of life concepts, of thought patterns, uh, but naturally uh, also the diversity um, in, 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 in the way you create things. So we probably this short description didn't cover the whole issue of diversity, but gives you really a short overview about how many aspects we really talk about in diversity in corporations, society, and within individuals. Now, when, you, when we talk about diversity in organizations, no matter if it's a parliament or if it's Lufthansa, uh, or if it's Google, um, you have three different perspectives on diversity. Next chart, please. On the one hand, the perspective of morality and human rights. So you might say that's the ethical dimension of diversity. Um, when, when we talk about, for example, female rights, actually you, you, you talk about diversity and non-diversity because it, females are 50 plus percent of the German population. Uh, so that is not diversity. Uh, that is even regulated in our constitution in, in Grundgesetz. Um, but when you talk about women in leadership, you definitely have a diversity issue. Uh, and when you talk about morality and human rights, you, you naturally you talk about inclusion in a positive way or exclusion or discrimination. And uh, so the moral perspective naturally is kind of the, 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 the debate which goes on a society level, more or less. Uh, next chart, please. 
but there is also a perspective of business and economics. There are numerous studies uh, which show the relationship between business success and diversity. There is only more or less correlational studies, not causal studies, but uh, the number of correlational studies tend me to say that there is also possibly uh, a, a cause and effect um, on, on diversity uh, and business success. And that is not the other way around that business success creates diversity. And there is a third dimension of diversity, um, the perspective of organizational existence. Um, the, the, the professor of Kubernetes, William Ross Ashby, uh, uh, created many, many decades ago the law of requisite variety. And, and what this law states is very simple. The higher the variety of a system, the more it can cope, can cope with the variety of the environment. So you need to have a built-in diversity and variety of your system to, to uh, better your chances to survive within a competitive environment. And there are also some studies, one of them is really done between Boston Consulting and the Technical University of Munich uh, about the correlation of diversity in innovation. So it's not just the matter of survival, it's, it's also the matter of surviving in the future by innovation capabilities. Uh, I will refer to that uh, a little bit later. Next chart, please. But naturally, many organizations and nations are blind for their deep-rooted problems connected with a lack of diversity. And there are different studies, some directly linked to diversity, some indirectly linked to diversity, uh, which gives you a, give you a, a, give you a little insight uh, in the in the in the empirical research done on that, Boston Consulting Group uh, did a, a, a big study um, on 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 the issue. Um, do large organizations become by nature more homogeneous? Um, and 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 what they found out is really that complexity and growth of an organization kills tailor-made solutions. So the larger the organization is, the less you are able really to react with a variety of solutions uh, to the external um, in environment. Um, a second theoretical framework comes to the inertia of success uh, from Andy Grove, the former CEO of in Intel, and, and he, he really uh, explained in detail that doing more of the same, the repetition of successful approaches is avoiding innovation. So here's the first connection, variety of approaches and innovation comes together with the repetition of old stuff and the exploitation issue. And uh, two professors um, from, from uh, the University of St. Gallen and Geneva, um, they made a study with more than 120 corporations, which did not cope uh, um, and went into crisis. Uh, and, and they found out a, a very interesting pattern, burning out of a company through faster, higher, and more, instead of becoming different. So the, 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 the homogeneous repetition of problem-solving patterns lead to a burnout of the organization. Now, the, the most important study 
uh, is closed systems theory and, and what Professor Rosbeth Moskanter, uh, emeritus from Harvard, uh, what, what she called homosocial reproduction. Um, in, 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 in Great Britain, you would say the birds of the same feather flock together. Uh, and and she, she kind of analyzed very thoroughly the issue of con conformities of cultures, the stabilizing mechanisms uh, of conformist cultures who are close to the outside world and how through internal mechanisms of recruiting, promoting and excluding a closed system is stabilizing itself um, uh, to survive in the future. Now, that is very interesting uh, because that counts not only for enterprises, uh, but naturally also to the issue of nations. Um, and there is an interesting book, which I recommend you if you haven't read it, Why Nations Fail. Um, that, that deeply has to do with the closed systems uh, theory. So, but what you might say in an overall summary here, it's culture stupid, culture. And, and if, you, if you really, uh, next, next chart, uh, a quick diversity fix, is not possible if it's a cultural issue, but it's a long-term hard work. And, and closed systems are the very hidden and rigid opponents of, of diversity. And, and for example, you could see it again in, in the very bloody uh, riots, which have been done just uh, two days ago in, 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 the, in the nation of, of Georgian, uh, Georgia, um, uh, against uh, against uh, the, the LGBTI movement, uh, but naturally it's not only uh, an issue of the LGBTI movement. Um, it, it's it's also if you look in Germany, uh, the, the rightist parties who 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 create a role and a picture uh, of women which goes back in the 19th century. And, and here I, I just have some, some, some uh, uh, pictures of closed systems, no matter if it's executive boards um, in, in, the, in the upper hand left corner uh, or, or the cardinals in the Catholic church uh, or on the, on the uh, upper hand on the right, um, the military, uh, and 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 the, the 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 separation in class in social structures based on migration issues uh, in in the U.S. or or coming down to the politics. Now uh, this is an old picture of Angela Merkel sitting uh, all amongst men, but but I think in the in the moment you, she would be just uh, accompanied. Uh, by two or maximum three prime ministers who, who are ladies. Naturally also family patterns which are closed or open uh, because naturally the family is, is the, so to say, the smallest uh, societal structure. Uh, in, in, uh, on the one hand, you have a very traditional view uh, on, on the family, uh, or you have an open view uh, of a modern family, which can be very, very diverse. Now, when you talk about why is there no quick fix, we have diff for the diversity issue. Uh, and, and why is there no quick fix on Black Lives Matters, for example, or racism in Germany? Um, it's deeply rooted uh, in the memory uh, of, of the people. So, and, and, and this, the structure of society is influenced by what, what I talked about, the homosocial reproduction um, 
but and and the ingrained social mechanisms how to keep the bond between the ones who protect the systems whom do they let in into the system who gets into power who gets promoted who gets who is going to be disgraced what, what whatever happens uh, so, sociologists all over the world work work very hard uh, to 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 do research on those effects on on closed systems <clears throat> but there is also number three. There is a mechanism, um, the selective uh, perception, and the blind spots. If if similarity attracts the similar ones, then naturally the 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 perception of this group is a very very selective one, and there are a lot of psychological tests being done and research being done, <clears throat> how you are blindfolded by the social structures of the group you belong to. <clears throat> so you have blind spots in perception of the reality. Um, and, and there is another thing which the <clears throat> communication scientist Paul Watzlawick uh, really did, did research on. Um, if efforts fail, you do more of the same wrong efforts. Uh, so, so to say, you, uh, if 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 you want, um, if if you want to to open up the system, and and you try to do it only from within, uh, you you fail. And if you try harder, you also fail, because system change. Can, can not only be done on, from within, very rarely. Um, Gorbachev and the Soviet Union was one of the very few who changed the system from, from within. Usually it has to be done from the outside. But there is also point five, um, prevailing paradigms and ideologies about the role of economy, uh, about the role of market economy, about the role of women in society, uh, about the role of the state in taking care of issues. If you look about the split between Republicans and Democrats in the US. Now let's come to a very practical example. What this, what this, uh, what this homosocial reproduction means. Um, and, and you might say, if you look at, at German executive boards of the, of the stock listed companies, you see that those people in power are incredibly similar. Uh, next chart, next animation. You, you see, for example, that 98% hold an academic degree. 82% never change the industry. 80% of all board members in Germany were recruited internally. 60% always remained in the same company. Now we talk about the economists, the PhDs, the MBAs. 15% are engineers, 12% natural scientists. Only 4% founded a company at some point. Only 3% of all board members come from Eastern Germany. Only 2% have a break in their CV. And only 1% are computer scientists. Now, what does that tell you? This gives you one explanation why German businesses have such a hard time in transforming them. Here the old law of requisite variety from Ross Ashby comes into place. You need to have internal variety to cope and to match the varieties of the external environment. Um, and, and only uh, and, and roughly only 11.5% uh, 
of the board members of the 200 largest companies, 14.6% per in, the, in the highest class of the, uh, of the stock listed company in the DAX are women in 2020. So you really see a typical example of a homogeneous elite, which tends to reproduce itself over time. Now, if you look uh, the, if you look at at the uh, the the EU positioning uh, of the of the share of women in leadership pos positions, you really can see on the right with the with the with the red arrow, you can see that that Germany, the Netherlands, Italy, Denmark, Luxembourg, and Cyprus are among the ones who have the lowest percentage uh, of women, not only in boards, but also in leadership positions. And, and, and so you can see that this, what's happening at the top of an organization is being reflected in the middle uh, uh, of, of, of the organization. Naturally, and, and there is a, a next chart please, uh, next, next, there is also a debate going on uh, about the female science, technology, engineering, and math proportion. Um, in, uh, the, the proportion of scientists and engineers in the total labor force on the left, uh, where, where you see that, that Germany is far below the average um, and, and, and more or less. Uh, at the end of the of the third quarter, uh, but also if you look then in the research side, on the right, proportion of women researchers in the business enterprise sector. Uh, now that that is a, those are data from the year two thousand and fifteen. There are not newer ones available, but my personal guess is that that this didn't change over the last six years, and you you see. Luxembourg and 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 and, and Czechia uh, and Germany and the Netherlands uh, and and you you will find the same who have also very few ladies in leadership positions. Now this this definitely is an issue. It's it explains some, but not definitely not all. Uh, a, a, a STEM talent pool, a female STEM talent pool definitely would, would uh, improve the situation. Uh, next chart. Uh, a short remark on elite shoes. And, and naturally, you, you, you know the ENA in, 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 in France, <clears throat> the Ivy League, especially Harvard in the US, uh, but also elite private schools in Germany, like uh, WHU. Um, uh, or the EBS, um, and it's very, very interesting that uh, in those elite schools and universities, you have significantly less applications from young people with a working class background, uh, and you have, so to say, an elite Recruiting is its talent and its successors from within its own social social ranks, and and naturally those schools play play a key role uh, for people to acquire style uh, and what um, the, the French uh, sociologist Bourdieu would call habitus. Uh, of the of the of the the ruling class, uh, to use those Marxist terms. Now, if we go on and we, we slowly come to an end, um, th there are at least three class ceilings for mixed leadership, and and those are based uh, on empirical research, um, and you have long before. The, the, before the issue of creating a family is on the table, 
you have already in German companies a male-dominated early career before starting a family. Empirical research tells you that it takes for a young man 3.8 years to get his first promotion after being recruited and a young lady, it takes 5.2 years. So you, you, you really, there, there is something, something working in an organization, you might call it the unconscious bias, which really already very early in the career is slowing down the career aspirations of young ladies. Uh, and, and, and secondly, the, so, the, the next chart, please, um, the, the, the part time, time um, um, failing career reentry of women after the maternity leave. Um, and because there is a myth in organizations, uh, if, if you happen, to, to get the middle part of this pyramid, I would be very happy. In the chart, yes, well done. Because there is a management myth of unconditioned availability of a manager and the unlimited effort which you invest into. That's very similar actually to political uh, organizations who also would argue that you serve seven days a week, 24 hours for the political cause. And, and that is one, one reason. Uh, this myth is one reason why, why female politicians uh, and, and, and female managers <clears throat> are, are not so often seen. It's the second class ceiling. And um, the third one on the top is the, so to say, habitus and network. Uh, habitus does not have to do with knowledge, with capabilities. Uh, habitus has to do with he or she can move in the right circles. He or she is self-assertive in the executive suite. He or she has a winner attitude. They look alike. They have the same management socialization and very often a same background. Next chart. Yeah, you can skip that and go to the next chart. Thank you. So let's come closer to an end. Um, Professor Carl White from the University of Michigan studied the very strange fact that dozens of firefighters lost their life during devastating forest fires in Colorado. And he found out they have not been running fast enough. Now that's trivial. He secondly found out that they didn't leave their tools. They had their heavy equipment, 80 pounds equipment, 120 pounds equipment on their back. And despite the fire, they didn't get rid of it. And in, in, in death interviews, he found out that those tools of the fireman were a part of his identity. And firemen do not give up their identity. And so he developed the very nice slogan, if you want to change things, you have to drop your tools. And... Uh, now coming a little bit to some solutions. Naturally, diversity, <clears throat> you can have a lot of technical tools. You might introduce quotas, 
But at the end, and here is this, this study of Boston Consulting and the Technical University um, in, in Munich, surveying 171 German, Swiss, and Austrian companies. And they found out that the key for diversity is participative leadership, the delegation of decision making, the openness to cognitive diversity. Employees feel they can freely speak their mind. Strategic priority, top management visibly supports diversity. A lot of personal conversations in the team and equal pay for equal work. Now we can skip now the next chart. Yes. And let me, let me come to some final uh, conclusions. Um, dropping old tools. I think it's a key issue for organizations especially businesses, to break the dominance of the established hard disciplines, which are usually engineering and science on the one hand and business on the other. Organization, organizations need representatives who have been studying cross-disciplinary philosophy, sociology, anthropology, whatsoever into, into their ranks to create really the diversity insight to cope with the external variety. When I was serving on the executive board of Deutsche Telekom, I said 10% of all new placements have to be different. And uh, well, there was a big, big uh, discussion if, if managers would understand that. And, and I said, just try it. And it was interesting really to see how management started to engage into new recruiting patterns. Naturally, talent management, when you come in the second uh, bullet point, um, it can be a biotop or it can be an elitist trace. And actually, talent management of the future is a biotop and not an elitist trace. And we, we talk about, next bullet point, we, we talk about new career systems, temporary management, revising competency profiles, and selection procedures. Uh, when we introduced the female quota in Deutsche Telekom, naturally we had to redesign the whole competency-based uh, selection process because we had thoroughly male attributes in recruiting people for managerial positions. Now we also talk about learning laboratories instead of instruction schools. Next bullet point, the issue of gender pay gap, but also the short termism, termism, termism in managerial pay, a working culture where you have a sovereignty when you work, where you work, any time, any place a leadership culture which embraces diversity of mind and replaces old cliques, a systematic learning on diversity by overcoming the unconscious bias through awareness workshops, um, and probably organizations which are not only execution engines, but also which have very innovative parts where the working culture is based on new work, which is much more interesting for people with difference 
than homo homogeneous people. Uh, we can we we can skip the next chart uh, and come to the last one. If you talk about diversity, real di real change needs a diversity of change makers, and that's this one refers not only to enterprises. You need compliance pressure. So there have to be has to be soft law, which is translated in compliance, which is kind of giving you the limits, but also the chances. Political pressure, pressure from the civil society, pressure from consumers and from customers. And, and naturally, you have to have grassroots movements, the so-called power from below. And in the top, you have to have at least a minority of the powerful who want to change. And throughout the organization, unbiased and transparent processes and standard, standards of recruiting, of compensating, of promoting, and the sanctioning of rule violations. Okay, I I let you now through a little bit uh, in 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 forty minutes uh, through through my my concerns about diversity, and now we really can have a vivid discussion. The floor is yours. Thanks. So, um, thank you, Mr. Sattelberger, for this really informative and insightful speech. I think we've heard a lot of interesting stuff, and I would now go on to the Q&A session and would like to um, ask you the first question of our audience, which is actually regarding something you've mentioned earlier. Um, the person asks, how could students or like young professionals become advocates for diversity? Like what is in your opinion, the best way to actually change this or like challenge this deeply rooted cultural stereotype that is actually right now going on? Well, on the, on the one hand, when you are still in university, uh, uh, what you do now with your own community of inter intercultural uh, uh, cooperation and, and 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 communication is 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 a key issue because you you build in a smaller world world uh, you you build a culture of of inclusion. Uh, German universities uh, are being known for that that people from other countries have a very very hard time to come into the closed systems. So, so what, what actually what, what I say is you do already by, by, by being in this community, you, you do something. But naturally, um, uh, a key issue if you are in a corporation or in a political network or in, in a civic organization, um, usually there are people who have diversity concerns and issues and, and building a network uh, even if you don't belong to this group, uh, but if you are kind of an assisting warrior, uh, it's very, very helpful because naturally uh, each minority group needs allies from the so to say not minority to support their cause. So either by engaging as, as somebody who, who, who has a diversity concern or to support a network because you want to be an ally uh, is, is a key issue. Thanks for the answer. So the next question is also a little bit about diversity and business, I would say. And our participant asked um, or said that diversity is really said to be profitable right now. So she's asking if, you think, in your opinion, if 
diversity is just a prominent topic right now because it is said to be creating value because it's said to be um, profitable or actually because companies actually care about those matters. Now, <laughs> I'm very pragmatic. Um, my first answer is, is straight, I don't care. If it serves the cause, I take it with me. Naturally, I would love if there is a strong belief in it. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, but if there is a, a continuous effort of an organization, um, I would not check if the CEO really believes in it. I really would check if it works. Uh, secondly, you have a lot of, of pink washing, a lot of green washing, uh, a lot of uh, lady washing. You have a lot of uh, uh, migration of washing whatsoever in, in a lot of organizations, but also in political parties and in, in, in the civil, com civil society. And, and here, if, if, if you very clearly see it does not serve the cause, we really have hard, we have to attack that hard. Um, a, a good friend of mine, uh, he is in the LGBTI movement, one of uh, the outspoken uh, forerunner. Uh, he, he makes uh, LGBTI recruiting fairs. Uh, he also gives uh, signes to companies who are really sustainably uh, defending LGBTI rights. Um, and he, he, he is really, uh, he, he called me just some days ago and said, Thomas, <laughs> what can I do against the pinkwashing? Because a lot of companies now, in, in June, when, the, when it's the month of Pride, uh, they, they hang their, uh, the Regenbogen fahnen raus, uh, the, the rainbow colors, and, and, and after June, it's over. And, and that, here, here is very import, important that we name and shame it. Because those people really misuse the cause. So I give you two answers. If it serves the cause, I do not really care if the CEO really believes it. But if you just wash it, we really have to name and to shame it. I think that's like a really interesting standpoint and I really liked your answers, thank you. So because you've mentioned the LGBTQ plus um, I, movement, I think there are some questions regarding that as well. For example, here a participant asked um, that there is nowadays a quota for women in management positions or in companies. Do you think there should be quotas for other like minorities, not just necessarily for LGBTQ+, but also for um, ethnicity or, for example, um, disabled people as well? What's your take on this matter? Um. I would probably say no, because three reasons. Number one, it's not manageable <laughs> anymore. Number two, you have a lot of diversity dimensions where people do not open up. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, this is very often in the in the queer community, but but also with with uh, people with these disablements. Um, so you you don't come to the reality. Uh, but but the the most important reasoning why I would not do it, and I I said I think at the beginning of my uh, presentation I said uh, the gender issue is a different piece of cake than the LGBTIQ issue uh, or the issue of uh, age uh, or the issue because we really don't have a diversity issue. 
we have by the constitution uh, an obligation that women have the same fair chances uh, as men. And that is, if you look at the, at, at the uh, corresponding articles of our constitution, that is very well pointed out specifically for, for the issue of, of, of ladies. Um, and, and so to say the the quota is just a door opener because at the end, you want to have in political parties and in, in enterprises, a 50-50 representation of men and women. So that is a different piece of cake and that would be my third reasoning after it's not manageable. Secondly, it's not always visible. And the, but the most important one is we, we talk about a different piece of cake. Thanks for your explanation. You've mentioned um, coming out earlier. So I think this is a nice transition to the next question. And a participant asked whether you think that coming out at the workplace could um, impact your work life or your career negatively. And if you observed that a lot of LGBTQ plus people are still hesitant to out themselves at the workplace. I, 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 uh, I outed myself after my retirement because I was pretty sure and I'm still am pretty sure mm -hmm. I, I would have never climbed up to the top of German industry if people would have known that I'm gay. So my answer is twofold. If, if you do not have the highest career aspirations, there should not be any worry to out yourself. But if you have very high career aspirations, you better be very careful. Because at the end, if you become a CEO or member of the executive board, a supervisory board is selecting you. And you do not know what those people really think, if they are homophobic or not. And, and they might say, what, what's, what I heard already, oh, this guy might be psychologically a little bit unstable, I heard. Mm -hmm. A common prejudice uh, against uh, gay men and women. So... So a twofold answer, probably it, it, it does not really, at least in this country, um, it, it does not hinder your career uh, if you, yeah, if, 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 if you want to come in the middle or upper management. But if you really want to come to the, 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 the top, I, I would be skeptical of outing. Thanks for sharing your own opinions and like experiences with us. And there's also a question regarding your experiences in management. Um, the participant asked, like, how do you think, how diverse are German management boards at the moment? And how did it change over the time? Is Germany like on a good way to becoming more diverse or are there still like a lot of problems nowadays? Well, remember the one chart I showed you? Yes. That, that uh, 80, uh, 60% have been promoted from within. Mm -hmm. uh, 80% uh, never changed the industry. Um, that you have a, a, a modern, modern disciplines like, like data science not represented on boards. Uh, that, that you have uh, 12, 30 percent of, 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 of women in the board. Um, uh, the, the development is not very fast. It, it's moving, um, but it's moving because of the quota. 
um, but it's not, it's, it's, it, it does not go on into the very senior ranks. And, and, and naturally, if you talk about diversity, uh, you, 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 you do not talk just about men and women on, on a board. You, you, you really talk about b- uh, different business perspectives, in, in industry backgrounds. Um, we know, for example, that uh, in transforming a company, uh, the, the su- success probability of an outsider is significantly higher than when you are promoted from within to a leadership role. Uh, so so the whole issue, uh, birds of the same feather flock together, uh, is not helping uh, the transformation of German companies. And, and that for me, that is one explanation uh, why, why we developed not innovatively in new industries, mm-hmm. space, biotechnology, artificial intelligence. And that's a, a key reason uh, why, why our large corporate players have a hard time in transforming themselves. Look at the automotive industry. That's the car guys. They never, they never take somebody from the outside. I see. Thank you for the insights. There's one last question regarding LGBTQ and same-sex marriage. And the participant asks, why do you think is there such a big debate about the same-sex marriage? Because if one marries, it doesn't really, is in conflict with another person's rights. So why do you think is there such a big debate about this topic in specific? Well, I'm, uh, but this might be my, my, my selective perception. I personally think that the German population has eaten it and digested it. Uh, it, it was a hot debate uh, some years ago, but, but uh, looking now in, in my... It might be in some rural areas, which are more conservative, but in the metropolitan areas, I think there is not too much of, 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 um, of, of discrimination. Mm-hmm. But, but I would like to really to, to, ask, to ask back, uh, perhaps I, I, I don't experience that uh, in, and, 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 and I have a selective view on things. But, but and that there is also an Allensbach uh, survey. Mm-hmm. Allensbach is, is, a, is a major uh, company doing, doing services, uh, sur- uh, surveys in Germany. Uh, and and I, I think it's roughly about uh, 70% of the German population don't mind same sex marriage. Well, you have a, uh, in the US, And and my guess is very clear. You have a rollback on abortion rights uh, and you will have, the US will have a rollback on same-sex marriage. Uh, But but the US is politically much more, uh, uh, much more uh, uh, torn between extremes than Germany is would be my view. I see. So right now there are no further questions. So I would just shortly um, start a poll for our participants today. And I would kindly ask all of you to just fill it out with a couple of clicks. In the meanwhile, I want to say thank you once again to our speaker today, Thomas Sattelberger, for joining us today. It was really a pleasure to have you here and to our participants. If you enjoy today's talk, you can keep up with the work of Mr. Sattelberger on his website or check out his social media channels. We also highly recommend his podcast. And I want to say thank you very much again, Mr. Sattelberger. 
Thank you also for inviting me. And please, please give me the results of, of the feedback. Feedback is breakfast for the champion. <laughs> Uh, so, so I really love to hear where I can improve uh, and how I was was received. Thank you so much, and and really grow and develop your community. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> also, one last word to all our participants: If you want to stay tuned for further inspiring events, gain more authentic insights about Asia or get involved in interesting projects yourself, feel free to visit us on our homepage. You will find the link in the chat. And thank you for your time and joining everyone. Take care of yourself and stay motivated. <laughs>